Hello, this is Michael Jalen. Today I'll be doing a review on this Vixer home security camera. Now it's actually marketed as a baby monitor, 1080, uh, meant for indoors. Um, and it's $30 right now on walmart.com. But I do see another one here, which is a very similar one. Um, this is a two-pack uh, for $26. So um, I'm not sure uh, what the price really is, but this is the prices that I'm seeing. And uh, this one has 1,942 reviews. This one has one review. So, not sure about that. But uh, let's do an unboxing quickly. Okay, there we go. I already uh, used this, as you can see. I just wanted to do an unboxing for the, for the viewers. So, this is how it comes. Here's the actual monitor. And here are the accessories. Um, and there's also a quick start guide right here. Uh, let's open up the accessories box okay and what you get in here is a bunch of stuff we're gonna go through it here is a charger this is actually a one amp charger I believe I'm gonna read it real quick yeah uh, the output is 5 volts 1000 milliamps aka one amp so yeah that's that this is a regular uh, micro cable Take it all the way out so you can see. Regular micro power adapter. Um, here are some screws if you want to attach it. As you can see right here, there are two screw holes so you can attach it. And this is the PC420. Um, and this is a sticker so that way you can actually <laughs> get the holes right. So that's really nice that they included that. Very thoughtful actually. Um, here's the actual camera. So first let's talk about the manual, I guess, if you want to see the quick start guide. I'll open it up and run it across my camera. Some people you know, want to be able to see the manual. I'm not sure. Yeah, this is not English, so I'll just leave that. I think I have the actual camera here. The actual camera, uh, nice and lightweight. It uh, swivels like this and swivels like this, so it's nice. It has two screw holes um, and it's round. Uh, here is the speaker or the microphone or both. This might be the microphone right here. So this might be, this is probably the speaker. It has the micro uh, power adapter right there, which is a little bit annoying. Okay, so this will do the dimensions. Um, when it's fully uh, standing, I guess, um, it is about four and a half inches long. Um, when it's just on the side like this, it is a little bit longer at like five and a half inches. Um, and just the base itself is four inches. It could be you could take this whole thing off for all I know. Um, now let's test it out with the app. So in order to set up your Vixture device, you can go to the instruction manual and you'll see that there is an app on the App Store and one on Google Play, so it works both with iOS and Android. Then you could go ahead and scan it. I usually don't have so much luck, so what I do is I just search for Vixture camera app. One thing you should keep in mind about the Vixture Home app and other apps in a similar situation is that if Vixture Home decides that they are not going to maintain their app anymore or maintain their cameras anymore, your cameras are basically completely useless because um, they're only as useful as the app and they will not work with another app. So uh, keep that in mind, make sure any company, even Ring, if they decide to discontinue their app, then your Ring doorbell is useless. Uh, so keep that in mind and um, whenever you buy or invest money into these, uh, I guess, uh, different companies or different products. It popped up, I already installed it, so let's open it up after agreeing, and I don't know what they do with your data, uh, but usually it won't be something good. But I think every company is probably, uh, you know, using your data in some way, so um, just keep that in mind. So now choose the uh, camera that you want to set up. Now as you can see, there's a lot of different options, so choose the one that's yours. Once you choose the camera, you uh, hit don't ask me again, understood, and there are two different options for connecting your camera to your app. And one of them is for your camera to scan your QR code. So uh, that's the better option, honestly. I've done it before and it worked well. You can also try Hotspot. Uh, so you have to turn the Hotspot on your phone and then the device connects to it and then you can get connected. I'm not a big fan of that option, so I'm gonna click the QR code. So now that you click QR code, oops, and you'll see it's gonna ask you for a sign-in. So I'm actually just gonna sign up right now. Get your verification code. You only have a certain amount of time to put it in, so here it goes. And then you can create yourself a password. And now you're in, and as you can see, I save my password with Google. Next time I don't have to actually put it in. 
Now you can go ahead and add a camera. So press add, choose the camera that you have, choose the QR code option, and then follow the prompt to connect your camera. First thing I want you to do is plug it in. So let's plug it in. Wait for a flashing red light. Okay, so we're waiting for a flashing red light. In my case, it's not flashing, so I'm gonna press the reset button, like it tells me to do. Press this button right here. There we go. So now that we got the app all set up, first get your camera. And here it is, you wanna plug it right in. This is the PC420. When it's plugged in, it should be a solid red. Now if you're having some problems, what you can do is turn it around and press the reset button. Um, I think you need to hold it down for a few seconds. Sometimes it makes noise, sometimes it doesn't. Um, but it resets it, so that way you can start getting connected. Um, after a few seconds, it should uh, turn to blinking red instead of just plain red. Let's wait. Okay, it's a blinking red, but in the meantime, we really could have started setting up the camera. Let's choose our camera, the PC420. Um, there are two options, the QR code and the hotspot. I would definitely choose the QR code. Um, click the red light flashing because that's what it's up to. Keep in mind this only connects to the 2.4 gigahertz networks, so uh, make sure you have a 2.4 gigahertz networks. Then click next. A QR code should show up, and it says place the QR code at 20 centimeters to 26 centimeters in front of your camera, or click to enlarge. So let's do that. We put the QR code in front of it. Let's see what happens. And it makes that noise, and it's blinking uh, green. Let's wait for it to finish. We'll click next. And over here, as you can see, it's doing this thing. Now it's blinking very steadily. It is still connecting over here. And it just told me that the pair is successful. Um, it actually says it out loud because it has a speaker built in on the back. Um, and now we can actually test the camera. So we have to call it something. Let's call it office because I'm in my office. And next. And now we'll be able to see the camera, which is awesome. So now the camera is working, as you can see, um, it's moving back and forth, and it doesn't have any battery built in, so it just works off of power only, as you can see the power cable is here, I'm facing it towards the wall, and it is working. It has a pretty wide angle, which is nice, and at night it actually does a pretty good job. The uh, in the dark capabilities and the night vision is pretty good, so I'm going to show you how that is. I'm not sure how well you can see, but there are actually six LEDs that provide night vision at some level. And keep in mind that since it only takes one amp, you could actually use a power bank with it. So let me connect to a power bank and we'll show you how that works. So you just use one end over here and all it needs is one amp. So I don't know how much this output is, but we could definitely try it and we'll see what happens. Right now, the camera is like, hey, here you go. Uh, so let's plug it in. And there it is. The camera should automatically find itself. As you can see here, it's gonna take a minute to connect, but um, we can wait and see how that works. I think the reconnecting takes from uh, one minute to two minutes, so keep that in mind when you have to take out the power. And the green light's flashing, that's a good indication. That means it's reconnecting, according to the manual. And the blinking shows that it's reconnecting again. So as you can see right here, when I cover it, it actually um, does turn on night vision and we are reconnected, so that's pretty cool. But yeah, when I cover it, it does turn on night vision. So that's pretty interesting. So covering it, uncovering it, and obviously the night vision is gonna turn off in a second. There we go, it's off. So it took about a minute to reconnect, and when I cover this thing, it turns on the night vision, which is pretty cool, I guess. Um, it knows that it's uh, dark. And here we are in a darker-ish room, and as you can see, it's seeing perfectly. It's actually pretty dark in there, and uh, it's able to capture the light really well and put it back. Um, if it's really pitch black, it actually still does work pretty well. Now, as you can see in the app, there are options for recording to your phone. This will record to your phone. This will let you talk into the camera, so that's pretty cool. And the photographing is basically a screenshot, and the sound is um, so that you can hear the sound from the room. Okay, so let's try talking. Press this. We have to let it uh, use it. And now we're going to test it out. Hello, hello. Okay, so uh, there is a lag for about, you know, half a second maybe, and the sound, it'll record the sound, it'll record the sound from the uh, camera to the app. So it's pretty cool. Um, I think all in all it's a great camera. Let's try it and see what the micro SD does. So here is a 32 gigabyte micro SD card. 
we're going to put it into here. Maybe we'll turn it off first. We'll put it in. Wrong way. Goes in this way. Okay. And it says that it supports class 6. I don't know if it supports class 10. Probably, because most micro SD cards are class 10. So um, it's initializing. Let's wait. I guess we'll figure out uh, what kind of recording it does. We'll let it run for a few minutes and see what happens. And now recorded for about uh, 20 minutes. Let's see what happens. I took the SD card and put it into my computer via this adapter. So here are the folders that I found inside of the SD card. This is 32 gigabyte SD card. And over here we have a date. And let's go inside. And as you can see, there are four different files. One of them is zero megabytes. I guess that one didn't finish uh, recording. And it does seem like it records, make it big, in five minute increments. So that's very interesting. Um, so if you uh, want to keep it recording, make sure it's at least five minutes long so that it gets to the video. And uh, let's see how it goes. I have to see the audio, say the audio is not that great, but uh, the video is pretty good. Obviously, I'm super close to the uh, thing here. I just testing it out, but I really like that the micro SD card does uh, capture the video. And I have to also say these are really small uh, sizes, which is really nice, which means it compresses it pretty nicely um, at 11 megabytes, but nothing was really moving around. So you can't really judge so much by this video because there wasn't much movement. However, um, let's say it's 20 megabytes of video that still lets it run for a very long time. So our 32 gigabyte flash uh, SD card flash memory, micro SD card, will get you pretty far in this recording. I think it will probably get you a few days. I'm not gonna do the math, but it'll get you a lot. So uh, that's very nice, and the micro SD card is a very nice touch. All in all, I would definitely recommend this uh, fixture camera. For $30, it gives you a lot of value with the micro SD card, with the uh, night vision. Um, I think I think it's a great option, uh, assuming the app is long-term uh, managed, and uh, otherwise it's worthless. And, um, and for $30, I think, I think you get a pretty good value. Um, I also saw that there was a two pack. I don't, I don't really know what the situation with that was, uh, but uh, from Walmart, it's a good buy. There are also a lot of other Vixture items. I did purchase them and I'll do a review on them. As you can see, there's two more Vixture items that I did buy over here. And um, and I really do um, I really do want to test them. And I'm gonna do a review on them and you can check it out and uh, we'll see how it is. Uh, so I hope this helped you make a decision if you want to buy the Vixture camera or not. I'm gonna also set these two up and I'll let you know how it goes.